Hello, hello my succulent friends, it's me Suze and I'm back. I missed you guys. I'm finally ready to pump out a few videos. I've got a few things to, a uh, few videos planned at the moment. So um, stay tuned. I will, I'm trying to find my mojo again. This is probably about my third attempt at trying to record a video. So usually I just press record and just yabba yabba but today I'm feeling like I've got to remember how to do this so please be patient with me I'm in the shade house because it's very windy today um, and I'm getting a little protection from the wind blowing in my mic I have to invest in a better mic I think look at my um, Mexican Giants there don't they look pretty um, so yeah I'm finally on top of doing everything I needed to do which is basically sorting out and putting all the same type together because before uh, all my little propagation pots I just put them if there was a space I would fill it with pot and I found it a little bit hard to keep them organized through summer because I was just really trying to protect them now it's cooled down I can really uh, spread things out a little bit and I invested in a few more trays because um, I didn't have enough so I can put all the same type in the tray and just shift them around pretty easy. So these are Mendoza's. These are all grown from um, leaf propagation, believe it or not, except for that one. But that's why they're really tiny. Not everything here I'm going to sell. Some things I'm still growing and propagating. Um, like for instance, these bare, uh, bare paws. I always want to say claws, but bare paws probably not going to sell these until I get a few more propagations so I've noticed they look like they're starting to come into their growing season now um, and so I want to wait for a few of these pots to get a little bit bigger and take a few more snips and get uh, more around this size so I can start selling those um, what else did I do oh I got some hanging um, pots to hang here and so my my thought was uh, to put all the same type in there and basically they're going to be little growing pots where I can remove plants from um, to sell or just take cuttings from these so this one let me just um, squat down these are Echeveria um, Golden Glow propagations these were actually grew off um, flower blooms and um, they got really um, well. They they got there was a, they were under a lot of stress through summer, which has brought out this um, beautiful colour. Um, so that's that's good. That's so now uh, I, I know they're going to start reanimating and growing. So it'll be interesting to see what colour these get. So I put all of those in there. So, so this part I'm going to use for Victor Kane. I had a few loose cuttings. I thought I'd just put there. I, these were all in separate pots. Um, you can see I've, I've chopped them and these are what's growing from um, chops and so forth. So I thought hopefully I can fill this up and use that as a place, to, as a resource to take cuttings. Uh, down on this lower shelf I've got my Darren Bergi eyes and I also have a little tray here where I've well, I've had this going for a while. These are all sort of just loose random heads, uh, leaves I put in there. Um, and so with time as they get bigger, I'll just take them out and, you know, give them a bit more space. Um, this is a good example of utilising one of these trays because I don't have a lot of these patch of areas. Um, so I am trying to uh, multiply them as well. I've got a, cute, a few cute little heads and they're nice and stressed. They look a little dehydrated. They were under a lot of stress through summer. Um, you can see I've done some chops here and those are the heads from these chops. I took a few heads off this one and I've got some leaves as well. So we'll see how they go. Um, there's a few bibs and bobs there. I'm not going to go into every name and every type that I have at the moment um, I'll just sort of stop and talk about things that catch my eye oh this is this is probably one of them it's a bit glary here 
I'll just move this somewhere I can show you better. So that uh, for regular followers is the Aeonium Sunburst Acrest that I was salvaging from when it got rot and I've put all the bits and pieces in here and they're well rooted so uh, now I believe they'll start this this one's really well rooted so you know it's the right season for them to reanimate and grow as well um, what else these these are mainly propagations from leaves and so forth for some reason this this real estate spot here the light seems to be really uh, good for growing whatever I put there always seems to do well so I've, I've rearranged these ones to go here because they look a little a little sad and they get we the thing about Victoria and Melbourne is we get a lot of rain I, I, I rarely water my plants in winter so that's a good spot for them. They get a lot of rain and a lot of and nice filtered light. I'm just stepping out of the house, trying to avoid knocking into one of my dogs behind me. Um, so you can see, I've shown this before. I don't have the uh, shade cloth permanently down here. I use it like a like a curtain. So basically, I roll them up, and I have a ball clip there. So uh, when it's summer, I unroll it and I use the ball clip and I clip it to the base here and it just holds the whole thing down. So it doesn't look fantastic like that, but it's actually really effective for me. Um, but this time of year, the light in here is quite low being, um, you know, autumn, fall. Uh, heading into winter so I do need to rotate this stuff a bit and get them out of here so they don't get elongated so it's, a, it's, a, it's a nuisance but you know you work with what you've got um, so I've got another one of these pots here where I've done a similar thing most of these are scraggly little bits I've just planted them close together so they don't look so scraggly so I might pull this apart a little bit to show you what I mean like that that's doesn't look very nice and um, in here there's a stem that goes to that one and you know babies pop off on these stems so so I try to arrange it where you can't really tell they're just crappy little bits um, and hopefully I can use that as somewhere to grow cuttings um, that I can take take from when they're bit more healthy and more established. I have another pot of them here. These are probably the better heads of them. These actually came out of my front garden um, where I chopped them up. Uh, which one is it? I think it's a bronze. A bronze. It may be a Vera Higgins. Um, so I'm going to wait until they flower so I and get a bit more mature and really lock down that ID on them properly before I really just didn't care that much uh, but I've got to care a bit more now okay what else what else what else so now I'm behind the shade house um, I have to film from this direction to avoid a shadow so I picked up a few of these um, palettes a while ago last year and I made a makeshift area to put more pots and I found these and I got these um, old drums um, and I use them as legs so that's really good uh, I don't really want to go into this stuff there's nothing really exciting there but people do like to buy this sort of stuff um, anyway okay and then um, I sort of well that shade cloth's been there for a while that's been there from summer but I've decided to leave it still gets quite a bit of um, sunlight here this is very MacGyver do you know what I mean by MacGyver the younger people may not it's an old TV show where this you know this dude he uh, he could fix or make anything out of nothing and so that's what I feel like this is it's a little bit dodgy but it works so you know go with what works 
All right. Um, how can I get in there? I can't. Okay. How about we do this? There we go. I'm in here. These these are really beautiful. These agavoides. Um, I'm just going to skim through very quickly. And then I've done a similar thing where I've made a makeshift table. I've reversed um, put some pots, big um, plastic pots upside down as a base. And I have, uh, it's a long story, but I have a few of these um, panes. Let's just call it that. Um, but, well, I was hoping to use them on a structure as a roof or something, but for now they're working as like, makeshift tables anyway so there's a pot there. there's another sorry there's a tray there or some edge of areas i've got some other bibs and bobs there all right what else what else um this was one of those little uh greenhouse little frames that you get from the hardware store but i since lost the um plastic uh, what do you call it? The, the, I've since lost the plastic that goes over it, but it works quite well as a shelving unit. So these are a whole bunch of cuttings. Um, I took most of them out of my front garden, and so the, a lot of them are flowering now. I just pinch the flowers straight off because I don't want them to grow flowers. Um, if you get rid of the flower straight away, well not straight away, any time really, what happens is they'll always, they'll always grow a double. Um, so I'd rather that than a scraggly old little flower, so I just pull them off. Um, hello boys, what are you doing? You waiting for mummy? What do you want? More food? More treats? Well, you guys have got your fill already. Um, some leaf babies. Blah, 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 blah. This side here, I have another trestle. Topsy turvy, some Hawthias. These are Black Princes. They're not sour ready. I love the colour, but uh, I have been struggling. I had struggled with mealies through summer, so let's we'll see if we can get them in a better condition. Oh, Bo, you're always hanging out. Husband says he's waiting for a cheeseburger to fall out of me because he's a real um, snack mire. He just loves his snacks, so um, <laughs> he's waiting for me to feed him. I did a little rearranging here as well. Probably from your point of view, uh, it probably looks exactly the same, but um, it's not quite. I, I pulled out all the pots and swept. Um, swept around them because a lot of the leaves from the bigger trees get um, blown in there. These um these babies, just to give you an update. Oh come on though. They're definitely getting a really good size now and the colour. Um, so I think this was the most recent two three cuts that we did. I did it on a video. Um, and that one too, that's off this pot. So these two pots are the same, Victor Cane's. And original, oh here we go, lawn mowing. Um, this was the original chop that I did and it gave me three babies you, you wouldn't even know that that was like a head that had come off and look what it's done so really hoping a uh, similar thing happens over here so I'll tuck that one back there a bit so these smaller ones get a bit more exposure um, and these babies on the stem are getting really big too now a while ago probably in the middle of summer somewhere I had chopped my Kante. Do you guys recall that? Um, so that has been successful because there are roots in there now. They're just well, a bit hard to see because they've got dirt on them. I actually filled up this pot again with some more top dressing. 
Um, it's reduced in size in the sense that uh, it's closed up a little bit and these lower leaves I've actually um, trimmed off the dry stuff so I don't know how obvious that is but I did try and cut it on an angle to create a little bit of a, a point like it's like you know instead of doing a straight across cut so all in all it's doing well hopefully that will take off through winter very uh, nicely we'll see um, oh the uh, the sunburst here is starting to throw off the bubby there so that's exciting um, I don't think I'm going to do head chops on sunbursts like I did last winter I want to just see if they'll just naturally throw off their own offsets uh, rather than enforcing it um, but you know I was successful with head chops last year that's how I multiplied them um, but I'm just kind of and here's a couple of them a couple more but I'm just kind of curious to see if I don't head chop how much through a growing season they will just produce their own babies um, I just want to step back and show you See, so those two heads that I just showed you they're quite high aren't they as far as like height wise compared to these other arrangements so I did a cute little another cute little MacGyver move I'm pretty pleased with it you, some of you may do stuff like this I don't know but um, if you don't what I've done is I've put a pot upside down to elevate it and then I've placed these on top so it raises up the height so they're more level with everything else um, yeah so I think that's quite an effective little trick well I just had to hose this down a little bit because my dogs just peed on it god don't you just love that anyway the joys of having dogs um, never mind so these are purple delight this pot of purple delights is doing really good too for propagation let me just get it out a little bit oh and my violet queens look at that look at the color look at all the bubbies it's just off the charts sensational now but. I just love that head it's just looking so good it's a shame the stem is a really tall one but um doesn't matter and look at these two little bubs look really cute this one uh the leaf is gone and this is established so that's good this is a new leaf that i've recently plucked off and we've got a few other little bubbies these ones don't look that um rooted in yet oh well they'll manage they'll survive now this big red here uh, has a beautiful huge bloom on it and um, I, I want to take the bloom off but I have been holding off doing it until I'm ready to make a video so we can do it together um, Basically, I wouldn't mind keeping it because sometimes these impressive blooms are really a joy to watch happen. But I have treated this pot with systemics, and um, there is there is no the bloom hasn't happened yet. They haven't opened up, but it's very it's very close, and I do get the. Uh, the type of birds that like to suck out the nectar feed on the nectar and um, so it's time to get rid of it so I'm just going to chop chop it off but the best thing is uh, we can propagate it and um, it will also help the uh, this head grow more bigger or, or maybe it'll give me a pup or throw another bloom so I'm going to use that for propagation 
which basically is I'm going to keep the stem part, cut off the flowers and hopefully get some babies off that. Um, I might cut the stem into two pieces just so it's easy. I'm just going to put that down to the side of me. Um, so it's quite an impressive um, succulent. I really like it. The colour is really getting very vibrant now. Uh, it was a little bit greener, because, two reasons, because uh, obviously the cold attempts put the succulent under stress and uh, uh, bring out those red colours, but I also had it more tucked back there and it wasn't getting a lot of, um, it was pretty much protected from the sun, so it went green. Anyway, the colour's coming back is what I'm trying to say. Um, I've shown you guys that stuff a million times. Let's just take a moment and admire the size of this Mexican giant for perspective. It's just bloody huge. Um, I need to chop off these flower blooms as well. They look like they're going to happen soon too. Um, which is a shame because I kind of like them, they kind of look impressive but this pot has been treated as well so let's just do it Oop. and this is really a part of the harvesting process for propagation this is such a fun way to propagate you can only really do these well, you get the best results from these when you let you let me try again really it's the large echeverias that uh, you can do this technique with oh This is not easy. Okay. Oh, not really the best cutting utensil. They're old and dull, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Wow, there's quite a few of them. Look how big that one is. Yeah. So, oops. Sorry, terrible filming. Terrible, terrible. I should take those two off. I didn't even notice these were in here. Okay, let's see what we got. Oh, this whole pot needs a lot of attention. So these were... We'll go back to it just to show you. Hang on. Just trying to take all of these out and I cut. So there they are there. Um, right, let's go back. This pot here I was talking about, these are pups that came off the um those uh, flower stems and here I have a tray uh, of what's left and so these are some more pups from last season this is a little scraggly bit I'm still trying to give me a pup got a little bit of sunburn oh okay so this is a good example uh, if you're not a regular follower um, well if you're a regular follower you've probably seen what I'm talking about. I talk about this a lot. So here, these were leaf stems. Look, and now we've got two bubs there. What were these ones? Oh, I've got a big red frilly in the front garden, so that's where that's come from. Oh, and these are big reds. So we just cut off a big red. I can see the tag there. This is from my big red um, in my front garden. You see, the, uh, the leaf starts to dry up. And now it's producing pups. So that 
It's the same technique I want to use with those um, Echeverry Golden Glows. So, uh, hubby mowed the lawn yesterday, so it's looking very fresh. Um, I'm taking you down to my back fence because this is another new thing that I did. A lot like those other hanging pots I just showed you. I got these planner hanging trays and i um, just making sure there's no doggy do's and I'm going to stand in as I come up. <laughs> so I've put basically all the same type together and again these were just a scraggly uh, bits and bobs that I've cut over time. I had them in like over like several pots full and I just thought you know what if I could just put them all together um, that would definitely help be more space efficient. So there's those. I've got some graps here. So I've got two different types of graps here. These more pinky ones. These are um, purple haze. And then I had some more Francesco Baldies that were looking a bit scraggly. So I put them in here and a few little cuttings. So this 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 is all going to be like a place where I'm just going to come and take cuttings from. I don't really care what it looks like. It's just a growing spot. Um, and I had some bits of uh, jelly beans. These were left over from um, some cuttings I took out of the front garden. Remember I used a whole bunch in a, in a pot. I'll show you in a little while. But anyway, so hopefully they'll... Um, grow and fill out and look a lot better than what they do right now. It's, actually I'm very confident that will happen. This is an old arrangement I did a while ago. It's still got a spider web in there. thought I might just let the spider live there. Um, lucidum, lucidum, is that how you pronounce it? There's different like you know another type of jelly bean. Got some Pat's Pinks in there, some other sedums. It's a little violet queen hanging out there. Uh, these are some more Pat's pinks. Yeah, so these are some more Pat's pinks. Again, they look a little, you know, they're just scraggly bits, but I'm but like you, they'll they'll throw off little bubs and um, you know basically fill out. I'm pretty confident. You can see even down there, there, there. So we'll have a look at that over time. Oh, that's the lucidums. I really like how the heads look, but it tends to grow a little bit scraggly. Um, it, it, it will elongate if, you're, if, you, if you don't keep on top of it, which is fine. You just take cuttings. And so I've got a lot of um, just scraggly bits and leaf props as well in there see how they go so back under my pergola i've done a little rearranging with some of these pots oh there's that pot that i was talking about with the um jelly beans in there they look very green at the moment i should probably give this a little bit more direct light exposure but i thought i'd just see how much sunlight comes in on it in this spot just rotate it a little bit. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Um, oh, and then I've moved some of my uh, aeoniums up the front here because you know, it's still morning now. I'm gonna take I guess it's it's around probably ten o'clock ish somewhere, somewhere around there. Um, so you can see there's some really nice glorious morning light hitting it, and uh, my green roses are starting to wake up so that's awesome sorry I can't help myself um, look at that middle one there and all the bubs so these were tiny and closed up like little roses hence the name um, through summer they're really suspended um, animated anyway they're coming back to life now so now it's a good time to s slowly take off the dry outer leaves. I don't usually bother when they're dormant. Um, 
because they, the dry outer leaves do seem to protect it. Oh, look, look what I've just spotted. Can you see them? Are they having a good old time there, Caterpillar? I have been spotting them everywhere. Oh, you've got to go. Ugh. Yeah, you hide in a little ball. I hate doing this. I don't kill them. I really, I can't. I should just squish it, but I just don't have it in me. So, I just throw it on the lawn and hopefully one of the birds get it or it's going to have a long hike to get back. <sighs> All right. All right. Well, fortunately, I don't think that one's done too much damage. When I was cleaning up around the pots, I'd um, noticed a lot of them just cruising around. I think they just, they, I don't know where they're coming from. They drive me nuts. So this was another pot that we, uh, that I did in a video. I cut a few heads on one side, which happens to be these ones. And I left the heads on the other side as a comparison to see the difference. So these look fuller, bigger, uh, but the color is not as stressed as these. So what's happened is it has thrown some roots, um, but it looks more dormant, doesn't it? But the color is more intense. So that's kind of interesting. Um, and so they're all starting to root in now. So now that we can compare the two, I think it's I like it better with them still on. And maybe maybe soon it would you could take these off for propagation. I kind of want to leave them all together. I like that full cluster look. So there's another one. It's very similar. Well, it's the same Agavoides. Don't know its name. Still just don't know its name. It's a mystery. I'm yet to see anyone else with the same one um, online. I've seen some that are very similar, but yeah. Right, anyway, so I've got some aeoniums up the front here getting some nice light. That's what I came down here to show you. Oh, these ones are doing well too. Just in there, I've just sort of propped up the pot there. Oh, you remember my toffee apples when I did a video? Oh gosh, I don't know, a good couple of months ago. So that's them now. And uh, I did another makeshift little table there. See the pots underneath I used to prop it up. Um, and so they're just some, uh, just more, more pots, more pots of stuff. These are um, Opalini, Opal, oh, hello. Another one. Right, just threw that one in the lawn. Hope the birds find them. Have them for breakfast. Uh, yes, this is a pot of um, opalinas that I grew from uh, leaves, leaf, leaf babies. So basically, there's another very old video. Oh, where I show them in the early stages, but I had this gigantic opaline. It was just gorgeous. It was, I was very, um, very inexperienced with succulents and rot, and it got rot. And I was able to grab some leaves to salvage, and I was able to grow babies. So that's a few of them there. Um, I also was able to salvage well the this this was the pup from it and so this is getting a nice size now and these uh, are from the leaves that I grew so I got my second generation coming so all is not lost okay so this these are the tables that you always see so now I have these shelving units here and I moved a lot of my propagation stuff here so these uh, were cuttings out of the front garden, so I made a tray for them. I don't really like how the leaves are. I've got this sort of strange bumpy thing going on on that one. See how they go. Uh, 
Yeah, some stuff like that going on. Um, there's some more of the uh, lucidum heads. I have to be careful with this spot because there's not a lot of direct light and I don't want them to get elongated. As soon as I see a little bit of roots on them, I'll pot them up and put them in a brighter spot, uh, which won't be long because some of them already got them. Some more cuttings, some leaf props. These are Pat's Pinks. It's a superb them. Small Pat's Pinks. Bips and bobs of cuttings up here. The, that and that was the crest that I cut out of my uh, Douglas Huff. So that's got roots and stuff. I should pop that, pop that up soon. But I prefer if it's just got little roots like that, just to spritz a bit of water on them for now, rather than laying in, laying the whole thing in some in a pot and dirt, more space that I don't have. small leaf propagations. These are from Mar Pins. Which are these? Yes. Oh, I didn't show you. My, my Mar Pin pot, I've shown you from time to time, but I haven't shown you the update. I decided to take a few heads off. Um, Elegances, and yeah, so just some more leaf propagation. Oh, this one here. These are the Supremes that we did on a video as well. So these are coming along. And where is the pot? So that's the leaf. And then we were doing, here it is. Is that it? Yep, that's it. Uh oh. So out of the um, other bits and pieces that I cut off, we've got one good pup here. But look, this is trying to flower, so that's no good. I'm just going to pinch that out right now. We don't want to flower. Um, it's a bit dehydrated too because I wasn't watering it regularly enough. There is a little bub under there, so that's good. This is trying to throw a flower, so that's no good. I just say that, yeah. Oh, and these um, these are tricolor leaf props, and these are doing really good. Um, Margaret, Margaret's got a few of these going. I hope yours are doing well. And I just wanted to show you these two. The pink jelly beans. This tray or dish. Um, were cuttings and um, they're really looking really chubbalicious at the moment and dense and not stalky um, which is how I like them but look at the colour it's um, they're nearly white so jelly beans always look good when they're that really intense sort of pink colour like that um, but if you didn't know, pink jelly beans are the variegated version of the red jelly beans. That's why the colour, um, you know, can vary between greens and pinks. But the less um, direct sun exposure you get, the more green they go. And, um, and they can even look a little white. And so look at the colour here with that just soft pinkness rather than that deeper colour and um, I'm really enjoying that so that's happening because this is morning light only it's receiving so cool that is good and I've got some of my other sunbursts there so hopefully these will start to grow a lot bigger and give me some more offsets and just back to this table, um, the multi-sips, they're doing well. 
the lilac mound is doing well. I have some more in another spot. This um, sedum wildfire, yeah. This is why I don't like these delicate sedums. The leaves dry very quickly. Anyway, I got a lot of little babies there, but it didn't seem to take well with the replanting. Oh well, I'm sure it will, will recover. Um, this is that Aeonium Fire Cracker. Do you remember when I bought it? It was like really tight, really. They, they, they even look like Seprovivums. They were so small and this has really opened up. Surprised me actually how much it's done that. This, um, this Aeonium's growing a lot. So the tag was... called Luteo, but I'm starting to think it reminds me a lot of a sunburst. So I might have to look into that a little bit more, see if I can figure out what's the difference. So it's actually afternoon now. I got a little distracted with some stuff, so I'm back recording. Anyway, I realized I didn't show you these trays. It's very windy here. Um, I don't know, I get a little embarrassed about showing my stock. I know you guys are like, what? Yeah, it's true. I don't know. Anyway, I have some white roses in this tray here, uh, but I also have some white roses, or oh, nearly tripped, um, in the shade house. You can see them a little bit better as far as what they look like as they grow. They're really pretty. I don't know if I showed you these. These are earlier I don't think I did actually these are a grim one some of them have got crests on them um, I've put them in here so if it does rain they don't get too waterlogged they don't like a lot of they don't like too much water um, these are the Hera Echeveria Hera pups I took those off on a uh, on a video off the main mother plant so they're establishing quite nicely the edges and the margins are getting some really nice colouring. Set of Aramalian, flapjacks, um, some jewels, some elegances. Some of these elegances are getting some really beautiful colours on them. You know, it's funny because I bought uh, raspberry ice because they, they're known to get the uh, red colouring on it. And so far, um, well, and it's interesting that these regular old uh, elegances are doing it anyway. So there you go. And these ones here, I'll put the name in because um, I can't recall it off the top of my brain at the moment. But I took all these pups off uh, a few mother plants. That's one of the mother plants. The other one, sorry for skimming over real quick are over here I wanted them to get a little bit more light so they had that was full of pups so I've taken them off I've left a few little ones but this is a really gorgeous succulent it's one of my favorites because of that pink color it gets just quite stunning um, I've got some uh, violet queens in here I'd prefer them to get a little bit more direct light but at the moment I've put them under here because um, I had them out on this on the open cement and this is very heavy they're still quite full of water when when the last time it got rained on and so the forecast has had a little bit of rain periodically back and forth so I wanted to keep them um, in here where they won't get wet because of the, the, uh, this sort of guttering above them um, that it stops the water coming down so I just uh, you know trying to dry them out a little bit so unfortunately I have to rotate some trays but it's a lot easier now that I've got a lot more trays that I can pick them up um, I've got so some superbums there and what are these ones again Ron, Ron Evans or emerald ripple there's quite a few of those uh, this little pot is interesting I showed this on a, a video where I was taking little pups off the flower blooms these were the big red ones that I found so I just popped them all in that same pot together anyway um, what else uh, 
In this tray I've got a few tricolours and um, morning beauties. This one here is quite pretty. As I've explained, I've been um, wanting to get my website up and running properly, but I figured it's probably better if I focus on getting all my stock organised first before I get back into doing my listings. So what I'm trying to say is when it is going properly, my stock levels will probably be quite minimal to begin with until I actually propagate and grow more of certain types. Um, this tray here on the left there, the red ones, these leaves are scalloped. They're Kalanchoes and they're called Candy Cane um, because it gets this beautiful delicate flower but it's a really hot pink colour. Like, um, it does look like um, candy. Um, but I have got those ones quite stressed and red. They're normally um, they're green actually. Yeah. Anyway. Some green roses, not a lot. So I'm hoping with this growing season they will, um, you know, I can propagate them a bit better. Um, also, I mentioned the mar pin, so let's just go over here for a tick. Um, so I took off a head there and a head there and somewhere else because they are actually quite big and over the top of these, so I thought we'll give them a chance to grow and come forward. Um, Evelyn's pot is now here and most of that stuff is doing really good probably this um one that i used as a, like a ground cover that looks i'm sure it'll take off but it seems like it's uh yeah it's not looking the best but it, it over here it looks nice so i'm sure that'll be fine so there you go my succulent friends. I, um, I hope you enjoyed a bit more of a thorough tour around what I've got going on and um, I apologise. I don't think I was very entertaining today. I definitely feel like I'm tripping over my words probably because I'm a little out of practice in making videos. You know I'm home alone. I really don't talk to many people except my immediate family. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I have another video lined up uh, ready to make tomorrow. Believe it or not, the last video I made was um, an unboxing of my eBay auctions and I still haven't potted them up. Poor little babies have just been sitting on my workstation. I've been waiting for a chance where I can actually um, film it. So I'll definitely be doing that tomorrow. And before I go, I just wanted to uh, tell you guys, I'm going to put a tip jar in my description. I've noticed a lot of channels are doing that, so if you feel um, that you would like to throw me a little tip, I would really value that. Please don't feel obligated, especially if you can't afford it. Um, I figured I'm not monetized, so why not give it a go? And any funds that I do get, I was thinking I might just buy some things um, like some more neem cake or other things that I want to try and uh, explore a little bit more. So I'll use the money. Uh, to help invest in this channel but really honestly don't feel obligated it's just you know I noticed other people are doing it so I figured why can't I anyway happy gardening thanks for being patient with me and um, I will definitely be popping out quite a few videos in this week so stay tuned and bye for now I wanted to sincerely thank you for watching and if you enjoyed this video I would really appreciate it if you liked it and subscribed to my channel. Also you can find me as S's for Succulents on my Instagram and Facebook page where I post daily photos with tips and information so come and hang out with me there it's a great place to chat and connect. Thank you.